Hi guys, welcome back. Third part of my best Superman graphic novel reads. Now, as I mentioned in the first part, these are drawn from my library, so it's not the ultimate collection of all Superman books ever, but that said, these are Superman graphic novels that I've gone and bought with my own money because having potentially read the issues, um, whatnot, I thought it was worth to put it in my library, and having read them several times since, these are the best reads then that I, I have enjoyed of Superman, of the different Superman series. So, last part, we got two to go. The big one, I'll save for the end. This is called Secret Identity. It's by Kurt Busick and Stuart Immonen. Stuart Immonen, Canadian artist, woo woo, and uh, signed. Um, it's a really different story, different take on the character, where essentially you have a young man in our world who reads of Superman suddenly find himself with these superhuman abilities. And so he adopts the costume and starts having his own adventures. And, and they never, I don't remember, it's been a little while since I've read this one, really explaining it, but they don't really need to. It's just a wonderful story where you don't have him quite as tied up in the usual Superman mythology, but then in turn you have him um, dealing with, well, you know, his, his love, then his wife, having children, growing up, living in what I want to essentially say the real world, because this is a world without other heroes, and, and one that I think you'll find as a reader it'll be a lot easier to relate to. So, a different read, not as commonly known, I would say, maybe. When I worked in a comic book store, not as many people had read this, and so I just like to highlight it. Kurt Busiek, Stuart Immonen, Secret Identity. And you might have to hunt around. I'm not sure if it's still in print, but it's definitely out there, you know, in used bookstores. And hey, supporting used bookstores, it's always good. So, the last uh, recommended graphic novel slash comic book read of Superman is, of course, the death of Superman. I mean, there's no tackling this character without talking about this event. And in my case, I mean, this was round about when I was first collecting. I've been reading comic books for a little bit, but this was when I sort of got into collecting comic books. And of course, the uh, black uh, polybagged death issue, um, how quickly it went up in value, and then it kind of fell down. Uh, these days, you know, you'll see it sort of selling at a comic book store for about 20 bucks. But to be honest, the chances are I probably have four or five copies already. Uh, I remember again when I worked in a comic book shop, this, this wasn't something that was, oh my god, oh my god, the way it had been when it had come out. And that's to say that this was originally released in 1993. Now, it has a slew of artists and writers working on it, so I'm just going to read from the book, and I apologize, but Dan Jurgens, Jerry Ordway, Louise Simonson, and Roger Stern are all writers, along with John Bogdanov, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Tom Grummet, Jackson Guis, and Dan Jurgens are also pencilers. This ran between a number of the different Superman titles that had been out at the time. So, what, you've got uh, Superman, Superman the Man of Steel, The Adventures of Superman, there was a Justice League of America tie-in, and I think that pretty much covers it. Did I mention action comics? Action comics. Um, now, if you've heard of the character, I mean, you've heard of the death of Superman, chances are. This was the first sort of big kill a major character. Um, certainly then led to a lot of other attempts or changes to try and revitalize characters in the 90s uh, as comic book sales started to, to slide, to, to lag. And that then in turn, though, led, I mean, not like characters hadn't been killed and brought back before. It happened all the time. But then it kind of became a running joke almost that, you know, when a character dies, they're going to come back. I mean, you know, Batman, Bruce Wayne dies, really? You know, you know he's going to come back. And the same with Superman. So what was also neat, though, with the series was that it definitely then had a considerable follow-up where you had a uh, world without Superman, where you see the characters grieving for his loss. You, uh, you get a bit more focus on the other heroes and how they're dealing with Superman not being in the world. Uh, and Supergirl certainly plays a, a role. Though this being, as I mentioned before, the sort of shape-shifting alien Supergirl that's in love with Lex Luthor, who now at this point in time has hair. Let's see if we've got a, a picture of that that I can show. Um, 
Uh, not so. Oh, no, hang on. Here you go. This is great. Just down there on the bottom. So, uh, that then in turn led to the return of Superman, which again was each of the series being relaunched with, uh, with a really neat, kind of crazy, weird cover. Um, each one hinting at who the different characters were. And this then saw the introduction of Superboy, um, who we're seeing being written and being brought into Convergence. Um, and, and, you know, I'm excited to see that character around. It's not that Superboy hasn't existed for a while, Connor Kent and whatnot, but uh, this young Superman with his uh, leather jacket and his earring and his sunglasses, uh, very much for me personified a lot of the 90s, a lot of the youth attitude in the 90s, uh, and maybe that was just because I, as a young kid, was reading this comic book. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying it was reality. The other characters, of course, introduced another big one was Steel, um, Henry Irons, I'm getting his name right, but uh, the character with you know the, the Superman armor, who doesn't actually have any powers. I don't know if he exists in the New 52, but to be honest, like I said, I'm not a big Superman reader in the New 52. You also saw Cyborg Superman and the Eradicator, or the, the sort of, you know, death, not death, I would put this, uh, the very strict, cut and dry, willing to kill people Superman uh, who believes in sort of, you know, returning law and order through his laser blasts of a sort. I uh, won't lie, I, I, I was a big fan of all of these series when they were coming out. Um, this though also has um, interesting role in that it sees the death or the destruction of Coast City, which had a major impact on the Green Lantern series. Um, I mean, this whole book introduced a number of characters that, that you know resonated through throughout the years and throughout the DC comic books. But I believe you can track down something that collects all of these reads, and, and of them all though, I would say The Death of Superman is, is the most iconic, is the most fun to read, um, and, and definitely worth adding to your graphic novel library. So guys, those are my Superman graphic novel reads for this week. I hope that you have a great new comic book day. And I will be back next week. Make sure to check me out at UYS999. It's me online. And also to leave comments. I'm going to be going to answering some that have just come in. And uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to sharing more of my favorite reads soon. Bye.